Hello and good evening everyone. Uh, this time I am in a Model X. So um, the people at Tesla let me borrow the car for a little while because this is one of the first cars in Belgium to actually have the new navigation. Um, so yeah, the, or the new maps I should say. So let me show you uh, what's different here. So the first thing I noticed is that the water uh, for canals and some lakes here and here, it's now gray. So the entire map is in grayscale, except for the traffic colors. So let me just turn that off. So that's an entire grayscale map. And even the bigger rivers and the ocean is now in gray. So that's a, that's a difference. Uh, I have no idea why Tesla uh, did that. Um, maybe it's a little bit more efficient that way to display the maps because it doesn't have to be in color but gray is a color just like any other uh, in essence so um, yeah that's that's a big question. Maybe it's because uh, it's easier to distinguish the uh, traffic lines um, for the visually impaired uh, people uh, being either having a, a, a poorer vision or maybe the color blind I don't know um, but yeah that's that's a difference and also it's this is also the new MCU and look how snappy that is if I just zoom out the, the tiles are loading uh, instantly and I'm on a three bar uh, LTE connection and traffic is loading instantly so yeah that's that's a big improvement over the old uh, MCU so yeah that's uh, that's great um, and that's something that maybe I would actually opt for upgrading in my own car when it's uh, available according to Elon Musk it should be available by the end of the year for upgrade now let's see how the navigation goes on so let me go to Luxembourg which is like yeah that's right there that we need to be so down here um, it's still not that fast I get the impression because now I have to it has to calculate the supercharger in between and it's taking yeah quite some time to uh, to calculate that Another thing that has changed is the maps on the uh, dash, so the um, the internal maps, basically. Um, and for that, we are going to take uh, a, a little spin, and I'm going to pick up my own car again at the Tesla service center in Antwerp. So that's a quick route. I was really quickly that it uh, routed that and now it automatically zooms in. This is one of the things that I really hate it's ever since uh, update 8.1 where the map automatically zooms in uh, as soon as you switch roads. So you can, I can now say, well, I want it like this, for example, but as soon as I hit the highway, it will automatically zoom to the level that it deems efficient for the highway so what I, would, what I would like to see in my specific case is um, kind of the Ghent Antwerp Brussels triangle and that gives me uh, a bunch of options to get to work but I don't want to use a navigation each and every time um, so I want to get an overview of what traffic is like in this situation I want to keep the map like this and it used to work before update uh, 8.0 um, so yeah, it, it, I've already logged the request to Tesla for this um, to make this optional. So I, I can see the benefits when you're using the navigation and you're closing in on your destination. But um, for me, I would say I'd like to have three options, either on, where it's like now, uh, for people who actually like it, uh, off for people who don't like it, like me most of the time. Um, or only during navigation. So when you have a route like I have selected now, that it automatically zooms right now. 
but if I would have no route selected it keeps the level that I set um, and when I had this little uh, icon here it goes to a preset level that I determine what it should be. But yeah, uh, we've set our destination. I'm going to go through the center of Lokeren. I'm going to deviate from the path a little bit. Let's see how quickly it responds to uh, me not following the instructions on the one hand. And on the other hand, it gives us a better view of how the instrument uh, panel or the, the dash displays the new navigation which on first glance is um, a lot more high definition uh, it's it's a nicer way of displaying things so let's go over 200 meter sla rechts af naar Eekstraat so that's the first thing that uh, I noticed and that is that it's now a woman's voice it used to be a man's voice a uh, very deep man's voice so now it's a woman's voice Sla rechts af naar Eekstraat. and let's see how quickly she reacts at me not listening I'm going to turn the other way here and let's see Well, that's really quickly that uh, it actually adjusts to the new situation. Um, yeah, I like it, really. Yeah, there was another real quick change in uh, navigation. Well, and it zooms out a little bit. Uh, there so this the zooming is really smooth on on the map and also get the impression that the map is a lot uh, crispier also with the street names on there um, that's really handy when I'm uh, looking for a street I'm near my destination um, find it a bit annoying like now when I know I just have to go straight through um, I'm seeing the map, I see where I need to be, I see where I need to turn, it's still away uh, in front of me, but st it shows me the, the side streets and the names of the side streets and yeah, I think that's unnecessary, um, but yeah, uh, other than that, so far so good. Now I do get the impression that the map is uh, zooming out until the next action that you need to take so roundabout an exit intersection uh, something like that um, and when you get there it starts going more to a top view instead of a 3d looking forward view to give you a crispier overview of what you need to do at that point um, yeah, the, the ranges that are indicated are also uh, more or less accurate, but we already had that in uh, the previous navigation as well. So let's see, uh, also the way the map turns, it's really smooth. You see how it's zoomed in now? And it turns really smooth, no jittering, no like every five degrees you turn, it's continuous turn that it's doing. Uh, I really like that. So now after this, I expect it to zoom out. There we go. So now it's zooming out. Well, it's not entirely zooming out until the next action, but it is zooming out because there's no action in front of me to a certain level. And again, we're looking at a little bit more 3D view. So this is uh, another one. So it displays exit numbers as well in the blue sign. But the problem is that here I don't have an exit number actually uh, on any uh, sign in front of me so it's difficult to uh, compare that to see whether or not I have the right exit at this point. Uh, probably if, uh, if I would have to take the exit, I didn't have to so I'm deviating from the path again, but if I would have to take the exit then probably it will show me 
more of a directional uh, sign right so once more I'm going to deviate here I'm going to take the exit let's see how quickly it goes and uh, or it changes and adapts to the new situation I'm expecting it to go fairly quickly but let's see Taking the exit, still thinks I'm on the road, so going to deviate from the road here, turning away, yeah, and it's adapting already. So that is definitely a lot quicker than what the current navigation does, so yeah, that's something that I really like. So now I turn around again to get back on the highway, and it now actually shows me that with a little green sign that I need to take the E17 highway. Um, that's something I like, that's good. What I am missing here and what I liked about the other navigation is that you get this pop-up screen that shows you you have to take the exit. Right? It draws the attention more to the action than uh, this. So with this you have to pay more attention, you have to keep looking at the screen uh, to see do I need to do something am I almost there uh, and with the other navigation the old one it pops in your face basically and your attention gets drawn to that so that's something that I like better in the old navigation but I guess it's just getting used to it um, as far as display goes um, so far I'm liking this navigation a lot more so also on another topic, um, the display of the cars on the on the dash in the adjacent lanes. So here we see it, it's going further back than what AP1 does. So the car basically um, disappears into the bottom of the dash um, instead of it, um, yeah, with AP1, it basically uh, disappears when the back of the car in the adjacent lane is reached the front of the of your car um, so yeah that's that's a difference as well uh, but it's not really reading it with the side cameras so I've already uh, tested that a little bit uh, what it does is it anticipates the speed and then just renders the speed for the car moving to the side of you because if you pass a car at a slower rate it also disappears uh, sooner so let me try with this Mercedes here so I'm not going that much faster than that Mercedes let me even slow down a little bit so you see the car oh well let's take the car next to that then so you see the black Audi there um, going to pass it slowly and if you look at the dash three cars displayed nice so then it disappears it doesn't disappear into the dash uh, but it vanishes a bit sooner then but yeah so displaying three cars in a row which means that a total of nine cars will be displayed on your uh, dashboard so three in the left lane, three in the right lane, your, your own car, and then the one in front of you. And if the radar sees it close enough, then the car in front of that. So that's nine cars on the display, uh, which is a lot of information to track. But I like it. Now here's an interesting one. We're going into a tunnel. With the old one, it would say it entered the tunnel but it would say it like 200 meters late and then it lost GPS connection which is normal in a tunnel and then it took about I don't know uh, two three hundred meters sometimes longer before it actually said it was out of the tunnel so the distance of being in the tunnel and the exact location of being in the tunnel was wrong so let's see what this display does whether it shows something whether or not you're in a tunnel so Nope, it just shows the path and that's it. Didn't, don't really miss the fact that you're in the tunnel. Uh, that was 
information that I didn't need uh, with the old navigation. So let's see if it is still correct for us exiting the tunnel. I think it's lagging a little bit. So here we're out of the tunnel. Yeah. No, it's uh, pretty much spot on. Oh yeah, I almost forgot to uh, tell you something or to show you something. That is the fact that with the new maps, you can really zoom in a lot. So you actually can see the exits. So this is the maximum zoom level. So you can see the exits from the main road to the side um, that I just took to get here. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, that's really detailed uh, information that we're having. And you see the separate lanes there uh, for just the, the, the intersection. Um, yeah, that's, uh, that's really nice as well. So what do I think about the new navigation? Well, first of all, I think the way it's displayed is a lot smoother. The turning is uh, a lot smoother. Um, that's, that's for sure. It's also a crispier display um, that we have. And yeah, with the new MCU, the new maps uh, being grayscale and everything, it, I don't know if it has anything to do with that, but it loads a lot faster and that's mostly to the new MCU. But maybe it's also because it's a grayscale map, so I have to wait and see what my car does with that. Um, the fact that you don't see the tunnel pop-ups anymore, that's a good thing, because they were wrong anyway. Uh, the exit pop-ups, I kind of miss them, but it's just a matter of getting used to it probably. So that shouldn't be a problem uh, in the long run. Uh, and yeah, I'm really looking forward to this because the way it also reacts to uh, me not following the navigation and uh, doing my own thing uh, was really fast and that's something that, that we need to have. So yeah, for me that's, uh, that's a very good update and uh, I hope you think uh, the same and I'm looking forward to get this on my own car. So thanks for watching. Remember. If you like my videos, please subscribe and hit the little bell icon so you don't miss out on any of the new videos. Um, and for now, stay tuned for more and uh, thanks for watching. Bye bye.